Hey guys, welcome back to Primetime Shoes. Like always, I'm your host, Primetime Phil, and this is not going to be the most upbeat video, and really, honestly, why should it be? The Dallas Cowboys season comes to an end to the hands of the San Francisco 49ers, which honestly, none of us are really surprised that it happened. Dallas had the ability to beat really any team going into this playoffs, but they just, all the problems that they've had towards the end of the season, they all popped their ugly heads up, and every single one of them was really shown through the course of that game and as they try to come back at the end you just kind of saw that it's either they're going to come back and what are they going to do the next following week even if they do so if anything they put themselves in a better draft position and you kind of have to look even with the negatives that it was a positive compared to the year before we're a year where we picked top 10 and now we're in the playoffs and yeah we lose but it's definitely an improvement. So this team has a lot of potential to move forward, but also when you really break it down, this team has a lot of problems as well too. I mean, you have to rebuild that offensive line. The coaching staff is probably gonna be ripped apart and the defensive coordinator is probably your main thing that you wanna keep, but you're not going to be. You got nine, eight, nine positions that are head coaching positions and seven to six of them want to uh interview dan quinn for a head coaching job so the possibility of him not being here is a real big possibility and i think that's a little scary because the fact that this defense has had to deal with two defensive coordinators in the past two years and a possibility for a third one doesn't bode well for what this defense may look like going forward and what our offense looks like now is really bad so the possibility of what they look like going forward is not good either so let's talk about what the dallas cowboys had going in the san francisco game and what they look like going forward into this offseason so when you're looking at that san francisco game there's a lot of problems that popped this ugly head and i'm saying this and i'm emphasizing it because that was a big problem going into it. It was mostly on the offensive side. They just couldn't get going. Everybody's kind of like, uh, like a deer caught in headlights. Oh, the big lights. That's the problem with having a playoff game and those nerves is that you can't replicate that. You can't go into the practice and go, okay, now it's a playoff game. This is either go home or you don't. No, you cannot replicate that type of feeling so the only way that you can get it is to go into the playoffs each year and hoping that one year you're just like, yeah, well, this is the same shit and, and I don't care. This is another game we need to push forward. So until they get that mentality, that's always going to be there and that's always going to be a problem. You cannot predict whether the person's going to have it or not. When you got guys like Parsons that look kind of tired, it was off the COVID thing. You could tell he just did not have that win that he normally has. You got guys like Demarcus Lawrence that just kind of honestly disappeared for a while and Gregory wasn't there. So your main stars played roles and that was the problem within that defense. Now, the, <clears throat> when it comes to the offense, man, so many problems. Dak inaccuracy, the receivers, you know, just not doing their thing. Even if they were, they're dropping balls. You got Cedric Wilson that I said disappears in games, and that was a problem. He disappeared in that game. Uh, when you look at the offensive line, the offensive line couldn't get the running game going. The offensive line couldn't get blocking for Dak. And honestly, when it comes to it, even when they got the blocking, Dak couldn't get it there. So when they would get a big play down the field, all of a sudden the offensive line will get a penalty. So the refs were in there. But honestly, I don't blame too much on the refs. There were some holding calls here and there that weren't called and were called. But when you really look at it, at the end there, there was a big controversy whether they put the ball down and all that. So Dak should have handed the ball off to the ref. They should have pushed to the side to allow the ref to come through. They just kind of spaced it. And the inexperience of your offensive coordinator, even your head coach, not warning somebody that they need to get there, they need to get out of the way and let the refs touch it, I think that part is where the blame goes. It doesn't go on the referees. He's trying to get through there, and the offensive line is not allowing him. So... For me to say that it's all the refs, no, man, it's your team. Your team is not good enough to overcome those problems that you're causing yourself. And, and all those problems were things that you knew going into this game. So as the offense was having problems, yeah, you had an amazing job whooping the hell out of Washington and Philly. But what happens when you have a good defense that can scheme to you? So I've heard and I definitely agree with that this team schemes way too much and you could see it within the San Francisco game. They couldn't, you know, just attack. Your guys playing off attack, attack, attack. No, you want to scheme. Let's scheme this and let's scheme that. No, just attack. That's where the old football comes in. We're not telling you to play old football all the time, but old football, when you know that a guy's playing off and you got a number one receiver that's going out there 
throw, man. Like, I don't understand your scheming part. So that's the problem in this game. So the problems going forward, there's so many of them. In the offseason, that's going to be a big thing. Let's talk about the offseason. When you look into the offseason for the Dallas Cowboys, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to pop its head up from so many different positions because there's a lot of playmakers that are going to be leaving. There's going to be a lot of playmakers that are hopefully going to be coming and then the draft is going to be coming. There's going to be coaching staff changes. Whether we want it or not, I think Kellen Moore, we want it. And I think with that, it's not going to happen because he had a chance to kind of show what he could do in that offense with the playoffs and he couldn't do it. And a lot of it doesn't really fall for him because... Yes, I would say there were some times where the coaching calls are not there, but when you look at the execution, I think that's the problem. The inaccuracy, the running game not getting going, the penalties, the, the plays are there sometimes. So I think some team may look past that, like a Jacksonville that may not have a lot of coaching candidates that want that position, but he they do have the number one pick, so it may be a tempting thing. So, I mean, it's still a head coaching position when you come down to it. So when you look at Dan Quinn, man, Dan Quinn, he's getting interviewed six, seven times for coaching spots that are like, what, only head coaches, like nine open spots right now, and he's being interviewed for like seven of them. So the possibility of him not being here, that's a big problem for the Dallas Cowboys because you've already had Mike Nolan that was in here one year. Then the next year, Dan Quinn was in here implementing his defense, which was amazing. You're hoping that he stays because the last thing you need is that the defense to switch to another defense within the third year. So, you know, it, it gets confusing after a while, and you can't expect them to just come flying out and improving from what last year happened when you have some free agents there that they do need to sign. But the problem is, can you sign them at a lower price because you need to free up some money somewhere and that's going to be a big issue too do you need to restructure amari cooper what do you do with tyron smith's contract what do you do about the offensive line you cannot bring a guy like connor williams back because he's hitting free agency and if you did why would you do it because of the penalties and and what would you need to pay him and if he's a backup then sure but uh there's also you know what happens with amari cooper's contract i think i already said that but that's going to be a big thing. Do you release him? Do you restructure the contract to make it more team friendly in that sense? You're putting it in the back end of there to have him a little bit longer. He's a big weapon here, and I think we need to keep him. So restructuring should be the number one goal. And then getting some value out of him should be the opposite thing. You know, probably the last thing we try to do, not releasing him. You know, I don't I don't think that's a big thing that we should do. Uh, because there's still going to be dead money, and I think you know releasing is a big thing that's wrapped around ezekiel elliott ezekiel elliott can't be released guys he can't be traded if he gets traded he gets released we're still paying him over 30 million dollars of dead cap money because they accumulate and they put it all into okay you got to pay this and then the next year it's a little bit less but 30 millions just to not have him on our team next year so that needs to be pushed out of the way he's still a really good running back that needs to heal it's just they need to use him correctly tony pollard walking out the door as a free agent you got some free agents also in the wide receiver in the sense of gallup what will he do because he did get injured again will he sign with us cheaper or will he go out there and make his money and i, I wouldn't be surprised if he went out there because he still has a lot of value Cedric Wilson, a big gadget guy, going to become a free agent. So there's a lot of things happening within this defense. There's a lot of people that need to be resigned because they were key players that we didn't expect, like J. Ron Curse. So as I talk, it's all over the place. The coaching staff's all over the place. The head coaching talk, that's all over the place. But, you know, honestly, the only way you bring Dan Quinn back, I think, again, is what people are saying, and I do agree, is that you have to put Dan Quinn as that head coach. And I would not be against that. But to me, Mike McCarthy hasn't done anything wrong other than Mike, you know, manage games in the sense of the time management. But some of the other things, I mean, I can't fault him for the culture that he's brought here. This offseason, I'm looking forward to it. There's a lot of things within this draft, a lot of positions that we need to improve on, but there's a lot of free agents that are leaving as well. So you can't sign everybody up. You need to free up some money, but you need to also release people that aren't scheduled to be released. So it's a big offseason. That's going to be a big thing. So the final thought on this game and the upcoming offseason. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Sorry for making such a late video on the San Francisco game, but you know, you kind of had to push all the emotions aside and I didn't really want to rewatch it, but you have to. And, and it's one of those things to even make a video about it. You really have to kind of understand the game. 
and it's just something I didn't really want to do and you can understand that as a cowboy fan so sorry for the late video for the San Francisco game but hey this is an early video for the off season and and I know I look forward to the off season because the right pieces need to be picked we got Will McClay back in the house and I think that's big can we get Dan Quinn to stay he's definitely tied to guys like New York uh, where he grew up, he grew up a New York Giants fan and grew up in New Jersey. So to, for him to go there, there would still be the respect, but obviously the rivalry would still be there. But uh, you hope that you kind of keep a guy like Dan Quinn because, you know, you have some assistants on this team that could hopefully implement a system. But if you put a whole new difference coordinator, he's going to want to bring his thing in. So I really hope that Dan Quinn stays and, and doesn't go. But, you know, with him interviewing for all these jobs, to me, he wouldn't be interviewing if he wasn't interested in some way. So I think it'd be they'd be a fool to not want him as their head coach. So uh, I, again, I hope he stays. You, you know, as a Cowboy fan, you hope he does too. So I know moving forward in this offseason, there's so many, many things that we need to do defensively, you know, to add some pieces to this defense that kind of make it more where that we're stopping in that secondary. But also in this offense, you know, there's so many things that need to change. You need to get more weapons on the outside. Uh, and you got some people walking away, so you do open up some room for those playmaking possibilities. But you need to get a good tight end. I think the tight end is going to be a very big, important piece. The offensive line, of course, man, that needs to be revamped. We need to start putting guys like Linnell Collins into left guard. We need to get rid of Connor Williams, let him keep walking with his free agency. We need to work on the left tackle. Think about Tyron Smith's replacement. Uh, we need to look at that right tackle going to steal. So there's so many things in the offseason that we'll cover. And I know I look forward to talking about that stuff. Like always, I'm Primetime Phil. Hit that like button on the way out. But don't forget to always ring that bell.